What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today we're going to be taking a deep look at the flinch mechanic in Modern Warfare 2 to see just how much flinch there is in the game with various weapons in your hand, as well as how much you can impact flinch with various attachments and a particular perk. And the first thing that's really important to point out here with the flinch mechanic is this is primarily determined by the weapon that is in your hand when you're being shot. With the exception of a particular attachment that the enemy can be using, and we'll cover that in today's video, it doesn't really matter what you're being shot by. The only thing that really matters is which weapon is in your hand. Another thing to mention with flinch is it doesn't fully stack with multiple consecutive shots hitting you. Although based on my testing, you can see it does stack to a very small degree, but it's not like you're gonna see double the amount of flinch with two consecutive shots hitting you. It just doesn't work that way. You may see a very small amount of flinch stacking, but you pretty much reach that maximum magnitude of flinch just with a single shot fired. And with that, let's just have a look at the base flinch comparison depending on the weapon that's in your hand when you're being shot. In all of these tests, we are being shot in the body by an M4 at 25 meters. And in this case, there are no perks or attachment modifiers whatsoever, either on my end or the enemy's end. And as we can see here, the sniper rifles have the most amount of flinch, and there's actually a lot of flinch with the sniper rifles. You'll be kicking way above target, even at just 25 meters here. Then we have the marksman rifles, which give you the second most amount of flinch, although it's not even half the amount of flinch we see with sniper rifles. There's really not that much with marksman rifles. However, marksman rifles do appear to have a little bit more flinch than all of the other types of weapons, and I tested every one of them. I tested assault rifles, battle rifles, SMGs, shotguns, LMGs, handguns, all of those seem to have the exact same amount of flinch, and that's why they're just labeled as all other weapon types there in green. And honestly, that's not a whole lot of flinch, especially with how quickly you tend to recenter after being shot. Unless you're in a really long range engagement, flinch is typically not gonna factor in too much for you. So there we go, that's pretty basic and straightforward when it comes to our base flinch values. Let's start getting into the flinch modifiers though. And the first thing I wanna look at is the focus perk, which is actually a bonus perk in this game. And with this, it will reduce the amount of flinch that you experience while aiming down sights, and it also extends your hold breath duration for the guns and optics that allow you to hold your breath. So typically this is more geared towards sniper rifles, but it turns out that flinch reduction does apply no matter which gun you're using. You don't need to have a sniper rifle with a high zoom optic or anything. And with this, we have our base values here, and then I'm just gonna fade in the lines that have a little bit of a dotted pattern on them. That is the amount of flinch that you'll experience with that given weapon type with the focus perk on and active. And as you can see, at least with the sniper rifles, this seems to cut our flinch by more than 50%. It's actually about 55% based on my testing here. And that is a massive reduction to flinch. This helps a lot with the sniper rifles. Whereas with the marksman rifles and the other weapon types, it's definitely still helping here. But in my experience, the flinch typically isn't going to be an issue for you with these guns to begin with. Maybe with the bolt action one shot kill marksman rifles more so than the other weapons in the game. But overall, you're going to notice the biggest effects with this when using sniper rifles, and I'd actually highly encourage you to use the focus perk if you are trying to snipe in this game. After that, let's drop the focus perk here and instead focus on specific attachments that help with flinch resistance. And you can see this listed usually on rear grips or some stock attachments or combs. You will see this listed within the pros. And I just did a small selection from a few different weapon types here. And the first one to look at here is that sniper rifle. We're using the MCPR 300. And if we combine that with the Cronin Zero Grip, which is a rear grip attachment that gives us flinch resistance, this cuts our flinch down essentially by the same amount as the Focus perk based on my testing. It seems to give you basically the same flinch value as with Focus. So that's great to see. You don't necessarily need to use Focus if you use this attachment instead, and that would free up that perk slot for you. And it was actually a very similar story with the SPR-208 using the Cronin G140 Cheek Riser, which is in the comb attachment section, and that gives us flinch resistance. And then finally, I did test the M4 as well using the support CP90 rear grip. And again, it does reduce our flinch by a noticeable amount. For both the SPR and the M4, it seemed like these attachments both reduced our flinch by about 30%. Whereas again, with that sniper rifle and that rear grip, it reduced it by about 55%. So overall, it looks like if you want to reduce that flinch on your class setup, you can go with either the focus perk or one of these flinch resistance attachments, and they're both going to be helping quite a bit. But I'm sure you're wondering, what happens if you combine these? Do you get like zero flinch out of that? Well, let's have a look at the comparison here. This is using the same attachments that we just listed out in the previous test, but now we also have the focus perk on and active. 
And as we can see here, they do stack at least to some degree. And it looks like we're seeing a roughly 80% reduction overall to our flinch with all of these weapon types. And that is huge, especially with sniper rifles. We're now actually getting a better flinch value than the base flinch for something like an assault rifle, for instance. And that means if you're aiming at like mid to somewhat lower torso, you're no longer gonna be flinched above their head when you get shot by enemy players. And that's gonna make all the difference in the world in a lot of situations for sniper rifles. It's also worth noting that you practically eliminate flinch for all of these standard guns in this game, like the assault rifles and SMGs, for instance. There is almost zero flinch at that point when you stack these together. And even with marksman rifles, this is essentially a negligible level of flinch, at least within the ranges that you'll typically be using these guns within. So combining focus with a flinch resistance attachment is actually quite powerful if that's something that you're going for with your class setup. Now again, just to be clear, I wouldn't say this is necessary, and honestly, it probably won't even change the outcome of a lot of your gunfights when you're using just regular guns in the game, but especially with one-shot kill weapons or any sort of precision weapon, I would highly recommend using at least one of the two flinch resistance attachments, and maybe both if you really wanna go for that maximum flinch resistance. And with that, we can finally move into the other side of the equation here, and this is how you're able to impact the amount of flinch that the enemy is experiencing when you shoot them. And like I said, it doesn't really matter what the weapon in your hand is, or even how much damage you're dealing per shot. Instead, the only thing that you can really do here to increase that amount of flinch is use the overpressure plus P ammo type. Now, I did already do a breakdown on this, as well as all of the other standard ammo types in the game, and if you guys have missed that video and want to check out more details on the ammo types, I will leave that linked in the description down below. But, of course, we do have to include it in this video, since this is a flinch video, so I'm just basically going to do a recap here. And with this, if the enemy is using an assault rifle, you'll see not a whole lot of base flinch, we already know that. And using the plus P ammo type doesn't really add that much. They're honestly probably not even going to notice a difference if you're using that ammo type. But then let's move on to the next level, and this is against marksman rifles. And as we can see here, this does noticeably increase the amount of flinch that they're going to experience. And especially when it comes to those quick scopers with their bolt action marksman rifles, this could very well make the difference between them hitting their shot or missing their shot on you. And therefore, if you do end up with one of those tough lobbies or against a really tough quick scoper out there, throwing that plus P ammo on may help you be a little bit more competitive with them, although it's not always gonna cause them to miss their shot. But finally, let's see what this does to the sniper rifles. And as we can see here, there is a very noticeable increase to the amount of flinch they experience. There is almost no chance they're hitting that shot on you as long as you get your shots off first on them. I mean, they're already gonna be struggling just with the base flinch, but this just makes it completely unmanageable for them. Unless, of course, they are using those things to help mitigate their flinch, so it could counteract that a little bit, but even then, you're still gonna be kicking them much higher than they would normally be experiencing if you weren't using this plus P ammo. And with that, that's finally gonna wrap it up for the flinch breakdown in Modern Warfare 2. And I'm really curious to hear what you guys think in the comment section below. Now that you guys have seen this video and experienced the game for yourself, what do you think about the current state of flinch in Modern Warfare 2? Do you think there's too much flinch, not enough flinch? Do you think flinch should work differently? Do you think maybe just certain weapon types need a little bit more or less flinch in the game? I know a lot of people have said with marksman rifles, for instance, that they should have more flinch than they currently do. Or with sniper rifles, maybe a little bit less flinch than they currently do. I'm really curious to hear what your guys' thoughts are in those comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.